Speaking of which. Okay. I just want to put this out there. It's obvious, but I think it's a really good idea. But also, I kind of want to call it just in case it does happen and not be like, oh, yeah, I already knew that when it wasn't late. I'm going to say this now. Because the Tokyo game, today's Thursday. The Tokyo game show is on Saturday, I remember. But they're going to show more off FF7 re um, Rebirth. I think the most, my biggest call ahead I'm calling it right now, but it's also the most obvious. Aerith is not going to die. Sorry, spoiler. First off, FF7 original and FF7. FF7 original spoilers for sure. And all the other FF games, but FF remake and... No, FF remake spoilers, but FF7 rebirth spoilers, potentially. So here it goes. For the top. I think Aerith is going to die. No, I mean, I don't think Aerith is going to die. That's going to be the biggest... That's going to be the second biggest twist. Because obviously in original, that was one of the main things. Main plot, twin, plot points of the story. Aerith dying. Her um, white materia falling into the, the um, life force to help heal the Earth and help fight against Sephiroth with Meteor. I think the biggest twist is Tifa's going to die. And it's going to make it... I think that's how the game is going to end. It's going to be Tifa dying by Sephiroth's hand. And one, it makes it more interesting because one, we already had the route with Aerith. Two, we'll go into a new interesting direction with Cloud losing um, someone as close as Tifa, his love interest, um, which, you know, happened for Zack, but we didn't get that side. Three, it would put people in a bind of confusion for a moment because through FF7's original story, right? In terms of the purpose of moving the plot or helping development, Aerith was there, her function essentially as a ancient bloodline of the ancients, help protect the earth, do whatever it takes, do what's necessary and whatnot. Hence, her sacrifice um, in the old temple of the ancients helped lead to, to Sephiroth's defeat, right? Now, it's going to be an interesting twist because if Aerith is alive, how is the white material going to go into the um, live stream? Granted, she could just put it inside, but... If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. She wasn't aware of... Nobody was aware that she had the, the white materia. Because when Sephiroth kills her, that's when her, her um, bandana comes off, her bow, and her holding, wrapping her hair with the white material. That's when it goes into the live stream. So maybe they could find that out when she does that. But that's one interesting perspective because now it's like, shit, Sephiroth is stronger than ever. And we're having trouble with, um, we don't have the planet on our side, essentially, to help fight him off and help fight off Meteor. And you still have the, the summons, um, the Guardians, um, Ruby, Emerald, and whatnot popping out and going around because the Earth is getting fucked up. But it also brings an interesting perspective because if Tifa dies... How is Cloud going to remember who he is and regain his memories and regain himself to fight Sephiroth? Because at the end of it, when Cloud gets so fucked up in the head from Malco poisoning, Tifa is what brings him back together by helping him restore his mem memories, in which we learn about that big plot twist that he wasn't, it's not his memories living as a soldier, it was Zack. So with Tifa dead, you could think for a moment, oh shit. How is Cloud going to recover his memories? And it's very obvious. Obviously, there's a second timeline in Remake that's introduced of Zack surviving and going with Cloud in his time. If those timelines in combine together, Zack feels the purpose of Tifa. 
because Zach was there too when everything happened. The people that were there when everything happened was Tifa. I mean, of the Nibelheim incident is Tifa, Sephiroth, Zach, Cloud. Of the main characters, not necessarily side or whatever, um, nameless NPCs, right? That was Tifa's purpose. Since Zack is alive and here in a different timeline and it's going to branch together, it kind of makes Tifa's purpose at the end for that important moment not as relevant. Granted, as a personal relationship to Cloud, yes. But Zack also fills that role too. He has that personal relationship with Cloud from Crisis Core. Not as close as Tifa, but pretty darn close. And he was there too. So he can sit there, see Cloud doing what he does, talk about his memories, the Nibelheim incident a certain amount of years ago, and be like, no, wait, that was me. Why are you talking about that? You were a soldier. Remember when we walked up the mountain? Remember who me? Gongaka. So, yeah, that's why I feel like it makes the most sense because all those notes Tifa will, for the most part, has to hit with Cloud for his development and for the story. Zach can just as well hit those. Maybe he'll do it with... um. No, but I was going to say maybe he'll do it with his timeline, Cloud, because he brought him all the way, but it wouldn't make sense because Zach didn't die, so Cloud didn't necessarily absorb it and face that trauma with him, for him. So yeah, no, it makes the most sense. Zach feels all the purposes of Tifa, so what's the point besides a romantic development... What what is Tifa's purpose at the end? That's my theory. I'm saying it now before the game comes out in February. And if I call it and I'm right, I'm posting this video. I'm reposting this up online again. So, yeah. You guys let me know what you think. Whether you agree or disagree with me. I, I, know, I know some people really don't want to see Tifa go through that. But, hey, I think it will bring an interesting angle. And not that people won't expect it. I think it's still going to... I think it'll be good because it'll also catch people because you're going to catch new fans. It, could, it, it does both... It, you, satisfy, you can satisfy new and old fans in a sense. Because obviously with a remake, granted, people are still expecting the same beats to be hit, the same main points. But the end of remake the whole point of the ending of that game was to show like, hey, we broke through that cycle and going through those same points, things are going to be different. So that seems the most obvious to change. But also, I think taking another beloved character like Tifa and having them meet that tra tragic end, it's going to affect new people because new fans, they didn't play original, anything can happen, but also it's going to satisfy. It's going to shock old fans because... They're going to be like, what the hell? This wasn't supposed to happen. I was supposed to be Aerith dying. Where the fuck is this shit going? They probably won't even like it. But I think in terms of catching people off guard and surprising to some extent, I think um, I think Tifa would be best, in my opinion. And I would respect Square Enix because if, the, if they had the balls to do it, yo, y'all got the balls to, to kill such a beloved character that everybody loves. Granted, they did that with Aerith, but yeah, I, I think Tifa's going to die and Zack will fill that role of restoring Cloud's memories in order for him to realize who he is again and be able to fight off Sephiroth. But that's my theory. So, yeah, I'm calling it now on, what is it, September September 21st, 9.56 p.m. I'm calling it right now. So you remember that, folks. Sun Lefty called it.